welcome back to Dum Dums and Dragons, where improvisers who've never role-played before journey into the world of Dungeons and Dragons. I am the Grand Wizard Bukake, your host. Our heroes pass through a spooky mist and have entered the land of Barovia. Reginald conversed with a skeletal hero, Quinny talked not Pete out of stealing the skeleton's soul tooth, and once the heroes moved on, Alan claimed the tooth for herself. Are the Dum Dums truly becoming murder hobos? Find out next on Dum Dums and Dragons. You have been following the pathway um, now for for uh, some time, but sure enough, uh, it would seem Hachiro pointed you in the right direction. Um, as you uh, make your way um, sort of uh, further seemingly into the woods um but uh you do come across an actual uh path that seems to have been sort of well trod um uh you can occasionally hear the flutter of bat wings uh in the woods around you but they don't seem to approach um as you make your way on foot uh kind of along this path eventually um as kind of the woods begin to thin um in the distance you can see a massive uh gray wall um, it's, uh, at the center is a huge gate, um, flanked by, uh, just absolutely massive, um, stone statues, um, of, uh, what seem to be, um, two, uh, warriors in armor, uh, both of which are missing their heads. Uh, and we're talking like, you know, three story tall statues, um, beyond that, um, you can see, um, Sort of, uh, there are some uh, craggy mountain peaks uh, in the distance, um, and uh, over, sort of, um, in uh, above uh, these gates in the distance, uh, you can see a massive uh, castle, which you take to be Castle Ravenloft, uh, sort of gazing down um, on uh, this, the, the town below. Um, so there is uh, a bit of a chasm um, between um, you and uh, the gates, uh, and there is a, a massive uh, old drawbridge um, that is currently up, um, but that seemingly can span uh, the gap. Uh, you can also see um, lining the wall, so kind of two massive statues, long gray wall, central gate, um, the uh, drawbridge is up. Um, you can see um, there are sort of uh, columns built into the outside of the uh, the wall um, that are topped by gargoyles, which seem to kind of uh, leer down at you from a distance. Um, yes, what do you do? Do we see any people? Uh, not along the wall um, or kind of milling about. Okay. So I'm 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 thinking about the people that um, Jin Pai had mentioned, um, but we don't we don't see any of them. No, you get the sense that like the town is beyond the the gate, so there are likely people there. Okay, but um, there's also like no one manning the gate. There's no one manning like the that. gate. Uh, also, perhaps um, worthy of note, there's no one um, on the wall um, standing watch that you can see. Okay. Uh, cool. So, uh, not Pete. Uh, is going to use uh, detect magic mm -hmm. on the gates uh, before attempting any kind of like lock picking or even just to like touch it to see if it opens up. Sure. So you're um, you're currently on the uh, the drawbridge is up on the far side of the chasm. So you can do you can look from a distance, um, but you actually can't approach the gates right now uh, okay. because there is because uh, there's like a moat between us. The I chasm. Um, it, right. it, it's uh, it, so what you realize as you kind of come up to the edge of this is. Um, and you, you can sort of feel this in the burning of your muscles as you're walking, um, but you've been walking up an incline, and it would seem that you're entering a more mountainous region um, of Barovia. Um, the chasm is literally looking down. There's kind of jagged rock face all the way down, and then there's um, a, a running stream, um, like very like a, a, a good drop down from where you are that seems to lead further on. But if you were to venture a guess, um, there's likely some seismic activity here at some point that um, sort of split the earth um, and mm. has created a very convenient um, sort of natural defense for Barovia. Reminds me of when I visited my brother at the Vale. <laughs> Shit got tectonic here. May he rest in peace. <laughs> uh, all right. 
all right, Pete. And just not Pete kind of just like, just quietly is like, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Sorry, I thought I had something, but I don't. (laughs) All good. (laughs) Go King! Uh, He just uh, cheers you from the back. Yeah. It's so, okay. I literally, I literally had a thought of just like, oh, gargoyles. We just encountered no different show. <laughs> um, you do have Actually, bad memories of gargoyles. Say, that's a really good point, Alan. Um, do these look like the gargoyles we encountered on the airship? Oh, buddy, do they ever? <gasps> Fuck. Damn. Good. Good call, Laura. <laughs> Shit. Um. So I didn't encounter them. Yeah, Laura didn't encounter them, and neither Juniper did Reginald. Juniper did. Well, yeah, Laura did, though. <laughs> like, ah, yes. I did. Come back to us, Alan Laura. Did come not. back. <laughs> um, I was going to give you that as a Quinny, like, hey, Quinny, <laughs> look at those gargoyles for a second. Uh, yeah, because Quinny's just fixated on um, that. Merle Streep. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, that does come come to him. Um, and, uh, uh, and he says to everyone, no one else was on the airship, he says... Uh, those gargoyles look exactly like the ones that attacked our airship, killed a lot of our crew. They were part of Merle Streep's crew. And not Peter Baelish, you would know Merle Streep as one of the like most famous, infamous thieves like at all time. Like, she just constantly winning the Thiefy Award for best thief kind of thing every year. Couldn't fucking just, sweeping couldn't. the whole ceremony. And it's just like, you'd think one year they'd give it to someone else just to be like, okay, you've already, you know, we, you, 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 you like take a rest, but no, because she always deserved it. So famous, yeah. so infamous. Uh, and then incidentally, the year I win it and yep. die. And then she's still bent out of shape about it, apparently. <laughs> but that's, that's just moral. That's just moral, though, you know, like that's just how it is. Yeah, um, to Quinny's surprise, um, uh, Merle led an attack on uh, McSquiggly, the uh, Dum Dum's airship, um, and uh, it seemed very out of character because you know she, uh, even though she always had beef with um, uh, Alan's sister Bryn, uh, it seemed to be a professional rivalry piece uh, until she lost the thiefy to Quinny, um, and uh, yeah, murdering a bunch of people in cold blood wasn't exactly her shtick. So Quinny had noted that as as uh, a, a disturbing. Yeah. Um, she she wasn't there in person though. She did send a like a morphing changeling operative. It was confirmed, uh, I oh, believe, later that uh, she, she was. She led the attack on the vault. Yeah, that's right. Yes, you're right. Sorry, now I'm getting the lore mixed up. Um, Sorry, we have a couple shows running. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I I want to make sure the group knows that those gargoyles could descend on and attack us at any moment. Or, I mean. They could just be stone statues. Um, uh, so maybe I actually think, not oh, Pete. Do we want it? Sorry, sorry. Tyler, you're going to say something? I was just going to say because the detect magic didn't really yield anything. I was just going to fire off an Eldritch Blast. Well, I was actually going to say um, I, I uh, we can still do the detect magic. I just wanted to clarify that you couldn't like walk up and touch the gate. So Great. why don't we okay. do detect yeah, magic sorry. first? I, uh, I, I misunderstood no, 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 the it's way you describing it. All good. Thank um, you. Um, yeah, let's let's detect some magic. Let's okay, do it. Okay, great. Um, so you kind of uh, you know your your goatee gets a bit pointier as you you reach out uh, with with uh, your your magic, um, and yeah, you can definitely feel um, the gate itself doesn't seem to be enchanted. Uh, those gargoyles it's just a gate. could definitely come to life. Uh, that said, they don't seem to be active right now. So currently they're dormant, but. Based on the stories you just told of the murder and bloodshed that you experienced and witnessed, it is something to be worried about. Um, okay. Sorry, I, can I, can I just hear that one more time, Tom, that the, they appear to just be... Dormant. Dormant? Okay. Yeah. Um, they could animate. Uh, they are not... Like they're basically they're not lying in wait right now. Um, they could be activated, but they are currently inactive. Okay. So basically, they're not like I'm looking yeah. at you. They're right. just present. And they're not standing still. They're lying in wait. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And how many are there? Two. 
Uh, no, there are, um, from what you can see, six. Um, six. So there's the two massive statues, and then the wall That's kind of extends until it hits the um, uh, the sort of mountainous rock on either side. Um, and then there are kind of columns built into the side of the wall, atop which is uh, three on each side. Okay. Each of them are voiced by a different uh, delightful celebrity. Great. Okay. <laughs> a, a celebrity lying in wait. Cele- a dormant celebrity. A dormant celebrity, yes. Um, Kevin Hart sleeps somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Quinny will just out loud say, um, I, I don't know, I guess it's maybe my turn to be the guy who stands out in the open and you guys cover me and back me up if uh, these gargoyles attack. Sound good? Not Pete, just like um, uh, while, like still like looking at Quinny, just like puts on the rig of invisibility <laughs> and just yeah. disappears. Yeah, so Quinny's like, yes, not Pete. Alan? Yeah, I mean... I mean, should we try... I don't know. I mean, do you want us to walk back to the woods? No, no, like right here is fine. They're not doing anything while we're standing here. I'm assuming that if one of us gets closer or tries to open that gate, something's going to happen. I, Unless I mean, someone lets us in. Yeah, we can't. We're, we're standing at the edge of a chasm and the gate's on the other side. So, I mean, I can go back, but otherwise I'm just here with you. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. Shall I just call to see if anyone... Okay. And Quinny will just, like, cup, <laughs> cup his mouth and be like, Hello? Yeah, Reginald will subtly step between, like, Alan and the gate a little bit, just to kind of be a bit of a human shield to Alan. Yep. Um, the hello uh, just seems to echo um, off the, uh, the the sort of wall on the far side. Uh, also, the, the chasm is a thousand foot drop, uh, if you were wondering. So not not a, an insignificant uh, fall. Okay. Ah, it'd be fine. <laughs> Does the hello like echo and then we can hear it like bounce down the cavern and it'll yeah. like cool. <clears throat> yeah, Quinny's voice comes back up to him and it's just like fuck off. <laughs> You're out, of the, out of the chasm. It always happens. <laughs> I don't fucking get it. That's why I, Magic that's why I chose to become Barovia. a thief. <laughs> just so I could always be quiet and never hear that stupid echo. <laughs> um Yeah, I guess... Can you roll me a perception check, please, Quinny? <laughs> Nat 20. Whoa! <laughs> um, so hey. the ground um, on this side, uh, kind of directly in front of the um, where the drawbridge would, would land, uh, you can see it is, it's well-worn. Um, there are two sets of carriage tracks, uh, so two sort of uh, parallel wheels. Um, that uh, seem to almost be um, uh, worn into the ground. Um, so it's clear that a, a carriage passes through here regularly enough to to have kind of left that effect. Um, but you can also see kind of a, um, a worn down spot um, on either side of the carriage wheels where it seems that someone stands quite frequently. Oh, okay. I'll go over to that spot and see if that perspective of standing there changes anything for me. Sure. Um, as uh, soon as you sort of step on uh, that spot, um, it's it's a little bit like in VR where there's like, or in a 360 video where the stitching didn't work. As soon as you step on that spot, you can see that the drawbridge is actually down. Um, but it's, as soon as you kind of lean back, you get that awful double vision for a second and it's up. Ooh. Uh, I'm gonna pick up some dirt, Indiana mm. Jones style, and just. Oh, I was throw about it to say. <laughs> into the chasm. Um, <laughs> in, uh, so at, at the bridge where you yes. think the bridge is, yeah. Um, yeah. it scatters across uh, the bridge. The, the for bridge those is of, down. For those of you who aren't standing there, uh, you see Quinny uh, throw a fistful of dirt, and it just kind of scatters uh, in a straight line across uh, something that doesn't seem to be there. Well, the, this is the, all for show. The, the yeah. The, the bridge is, it's an illusion. Michael. Uh, huh. 
Illusions, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> no, he just like claps a hand on Quinny's shoulder. It's like Jehovah begins with an eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Quinny goes up to the lead, the lid, the ledge of the chasm, and is like the penitent man kneels before God. <laughs> Kneel and just rolls. <laughs> Only the penitent man will pass. Penitent, penitent. Um, yeah. When do you uh, get so- to the crystal skull, though? <laughs> <laughs> Quinny, I think, still carefully, Quinny will approach the chasm and like. Leaning his weight back, stick a toe out, trying to feel the surface of the invisible drawbridge. Um, yeah, so it, it's got that sickening feeling of vertigo that always happens when your 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 brain's trying to wrestle with an illusion like this. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, you you feel um, a wooden board under under your foot um, that that would match kind of what you can see on the, the drawbridge. That said, um, you hear it creak. As you you put your weight on it, and uh, you're not entirely sure how safe this bridge is. It does seem to be down, um, but much like uh, you know the the state of the the gate, which is now that you can see kind of with the with the drawbridge down, um, it's a, a massive um, sort of a, like iron gate, um, but uh, it's um, uh, it's up. Like the the gate is is extended kind of up into the um, uh, up into the the top of the the sort of little cavern thing, um, and it's rusted shut. Like it seems like it's been kind of up forever, uh, and kind of surrounded by green moss. That's how it appears in the illusion that I'm seeing. Um, sorry, uh, to clarify, it was hard to see with the bridge up. Now that the mm. bridge is down, you can see the gate beyond is oh, clearly okay, just sorry. held open. Um, but uh, the fact that there's moss growing and that it's rusted syncs up with kind of the nature of this um, uh, uh, drawbridge as well. Because like it, this all seems to be kind of slightly ill-kept, if that makes any sense. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to grab just two big handfuls of dirt if I can. And anytime I'm unsure of my footing trying to cross this thing, I'm going to throw some some dirt down in front of me and see if it just drops or if I'm still kind of walking in the right direction. Smart. Okay. Smart. Real, very smart. Uh, and I'll say, uh, everybody grab <clears throat> grab some dirt. Uh, oh, I've got dirt. <laughs> let's, uh, let's see if we can cross this thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, Alan's totally comfortable crossing. Okay. And um, also because not Pete is invisible, it just looks like a pile of dirt, like floating. <laughs> I was going to say, Re- so Reginald will put a hand on Alan's shoulder and go, before you go, uh, and then he'll just like offer her an end of a rope that he has. And he's like, why don't you tie yourself around me? So if anything goes wrong, you'll be safe. I can pull you back up. And I just think, yeah, don't have to waste a spell slot. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Cool. So, um, can, hmm, I'll just do this on my end. Uh, so you begin to step out onto the bridge. Um, moment. Okay. Uh, you step out onto the bridge, uh, and as, uh, you begin to walk, uh, you can feel the boards, um, sink a little bit under your, your feet as, as you walk, which... Uh, as you know, on a bridge made of wood is not uh, a, a particularly Ooh, comforting not a uh, welcome sensation. sensation. Um, is it squishy? It it is, um, and um, yeah, there's a sort of creaking and squishing. Laura, punky. That was the word I was looking for. Sorry, it's punky. Huh. Brewster, not important. Um, Sorry. You. Uh, <laughs> You're very kind of uh, uncomfortable as you make your way across, um, but based on the rolls I did sneakily over here behind my DM screen, um, you all pass successfully. Oh, sweet. Um, hey. that's nice. So um, you make it to the other side, and um, looking back, you can see kind of a um, uh, a shimmering curtain um, of uh, of energy, um, just kind of along the the edge of the um, the chasm uh, that seems to be kind of the the edge of the illusion. Um, but, uh, yeah, you, you've crossed successfully, uh, the gargoyles, um, though menacing, do not seem to move as you approach the gate, and, um, with that, uh, you pass into, uh, the town of Barovia. Cool, so, once they're both across, Reginald will have, like, untied Alan from himself, there's no need for a walking rig. 
Yeah, well, I'm, well, not, you're I'm not, not going to be an Alan on a leash. <laughs> <laughs> Just no, an Alan on a leash. Uh, <laughs> great. Um, so, uh, welcome to Barovia. Uh, it's glum. <laughs> so, um, you find yourselves in... Like post-communist a... glum? Like what kind yeah, of glum? Yeah, yeah. Um, post, post-communist glum if it was like a uh, sort of a classic medieval town. Mm. Um, so less like brutalist concrete and more, um, like an alpine, an alpine, yeah, like an alpine village you would find at like a theme park where they're like, it's the mountain place. Um, so, um, yeah, um, all the, uh, think a little bit like, um, I, I know I've used this metaphor in other shows, but, um. A little bit like uh, a a Tim Burton designed um, Dickensian London. So everything, all the buildings are um, just like a little a little like bent, uh, a little dilapidated. Um, everything is gray in sort of um, uh, that weird dumb lens that all the filmmakers are using right now, where it's, everything's like sort of a grayish blue. Um, and um, yeah, as you enter the gates, um, you can see people kind of milling about. Um, can all of you please roll me a perception check? Sure. Tom, this is a weird mm-hmm. thing to note. Oh no, that's survival. I'm not, I'm, they won't affect perception. Don't worry about it. Uh, four. No, three. The minus one. Shit. 16. 18. Nine. Okay. Um, so as you uh, begin to kind of make your way in, into the village, the uh, the mud uh, of the pathway um, begins to give way to um, sort of slick cobblestones underfoot, uh, and the uh, the mist is is present uh, here as well. It's more of a sort of a rolling fog, um, not Silent Hill levels, but just kind of uh, enough that um, things like um, back alleys and stuff. There's just kind of a drifting. Um, fog clinging, clinging to them. Um, the air is very damp, um, and uh, a light rain continues to fall. Um, looking around from kind of where you're standing, um, you can see, again, just kind of a the pathway leads sort of into the town itself. Um, you can see Castle Ravenloft um, up, sort of uh, atop a, a mountain, looking down. Um, it's almost, even despite the fact you can't really locate the sun right now. It almost seems like the entire town exists in the shadow of this massive castle. Um, and with your perception check, uh, Quinny, you notice um, that um, all everyone looks pretty, uh, to Cat's point, like post-communist, uh, uh-oh, uh, USSR collapsed. Um, there's a lot of kind of um, weight to these people. Their shoulders are very tense. Um, there's uh, there doesn't seem to be a lot of mirth, um, but you notice almost immediately that um, there's a wide. There seems to be a very stark contrast um, between how people are dressed. A lot of people are dressed in um, sort of very gray, plain clothing, um, but every so often you'll see you know an, an elf walk by and she's wearing um, a bright blue vest, um, and you know there's there's uh, she's got like a like a, a, a jeweled pin in her hair and seems to be just a little bit brighter uh, than the others. Um, you notice um, there's a, a pair of dwarves um, that are uh, sort of doing some some light woodworking, um, make, seem to be making chairs. Um, and uh, one of them is wearing um, just kind of a, a, a nice dark purple um, doublet, uh, whereas the other one seems to just be in, in pure pure gray. And you notice this kind of, um, as you, you scan the crowd, there do seem to be some people, and it, it doesn't seem to be what, what you'd normally expect, which is like, the nobles are wearing fancy clothes, and the peasants are wearing peasant clothes. Is Everyone, it kind of like a Pleasantville thing? Like, they really stand out, the people and the um, ones wearing Yeah, color. like, I, I would say uh, you're in the right ballpark, but if, if you kind of dial everything about that to 50%, so it's not yeah. as stark a contrast where it's like, oh, holy okay. shit, you're in color and you're in black and white. But that's exactly the right way to be thinking about it. There are just some people Like, no one's seen... making erotic paintings with Jeff Daniels. <laughs> I mean, like, I am now in my head. Right. Um, 
But um, <laughs> that's a story for another night. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can definitely see there there is some kind of uh, of difference, but it doesn't seem to be by class. Okay. Um, that said, um, there definitely isn't. Um, Despite the fact that you're, you're travelers who've just arrived in town, uh, it's not like the record skips and the piano player stops and everyone in the bar turns to look at you. Um, it, uh, they almost seem completely unfazed by your, your presence. Everyone's just kind of going about their business and um, there doesn't seem to be much uh, excitement or um, uh, ritual or circumstance to your, to your arrival, if that makes any sense. So from where you're standing on the street, um, there are sort of a, a couple of things that, that stand out. Um, in the uh, distance, kind of tucked up against, um, slightly up the, the incline um, towards the kind of cliffs uh, that... Uh, so again, Ravenloft is top of a cliff, long cliff down, um, there's sort of a slope. Uh, in the distance up the slope a ways, you can see um, what looks to be a, a small kind of worn down church. Um, in town, um, as you kind of make your way into uh, the, the sort of center of town, um, you can see um, a sign for a tavern. Um, although, much like everywhere else, there seems to be kind of a, a glum cloud over it. It's not... You, you can... Like, you, you don't hear sounds of, like, revels. You just kind of see a sign for a tavern. Um, there seems to be a shop uh, called Buildrath's Mercantile uh, that the two dwarves are working outside of. Um, and... Quinny and uh, Quinny Reginald and not Pete. Can you please roll me a, a perception check? Okay. Seventeen. Seventeen. Ah. Eight. Cool. So um, Quinny and um, not Pete. Uh, you can also hear what sounds like um, the muted sound of um, a woman wailing. Uh, just, just like weeping in uh, a tremendous volume um, from uh, one of the houses nearby. The houses um, all seem to, again, there's just a sense looking at them that you actually can't tell which ones are inhabited and which ones are abandoned. Um, all of them have a similar slightly slanty shanty thing going on. Um, and uh, sort of looking through the windows, it just seems to be a pool of darkness past uh, the, the, the sill into any of these places. Uh, some of them are boarded up. Um, but, uh, yeah, you also see a massive um, sort of three-story manor house um, that uh, someone has scrawled uh, seemingly in blood uh, across uh, the doorframe. Um, uh, death house, do not enter. I mean, is I that where the wailing is coming from? <laughs> it, uh, sadly, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, sure, great. No, not going to enter. Uh I mean, let's clock that. Let's, uh, <laughs> sure, yeah. I'll, I'll make a note of Death House. Yeah. I mean, um, I don't know if anyone else here has ever been to, like, Hamilton, Ontario, but I'm getting some serious vibes. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Uh, can I can I clearly tell which house this woman's if, if you were to from? If you were to follow it, yes. Um, yeah. It's, uh, it's a, you know, a couple... It, it looks to be, like, a street over. Um, but, uh, yeah, you could definitely follow. Um... You notice, uh, again, people just kind of coming and going about their business. Um, a, uh, a man walks by uh, the death house, and there seem to be um, two children uh, standing outside. And one of them just says, Please, mister, we need your help. There's a monster in our house. And he just, like, brushes past them and continues on his way. Huh. That is also concerning. Um what what I ultimately want to do is like everyone, like you said, there doesn't appear to be any kind of real hum or buzz of mm -hmm. activity around here. I can hear this person wailing and crying, so surely these other citizens or people closer to the house must be able to hear. It. I ultimately want to approach the house and then like just the closest person be like, "Hey, don't you hear that? What's going on?" And just okay. gesture to the house. So um, you make your way uh, sort of away from the death house uh, and sort of around a corner. Um, to um, a, a street that looks very similar. Again, all these these streets look vaguely the same. It's just poor set design. 
<laughs> yeah, it, it was a, clearly a very lazy game developer just hit, like, copy-paste on a bunch of buildings. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you, um, you find a uh, sort of a dark uh, two-story townhouse um, that uh, seems to have been uh, barricaded from the inside. So you can see boards over the windows, but from from inside, um, and uh, yeah, you uh, you stop um, a uh, so you stop a, um, a, a sort of an orcish uh, woman who's who's walking by um, Quinny and uh, ask her if she hears the cries, uh, and uh, she just nods and says, uh, "Yes, we've heard those for many nights, and I suspect we'll hear them for many nights more." That poor woman, um, and. Well, then she just, like, if she's just brushes past away, and walks yeah. away. Yep. Like, as she's walking, I'll just be like, why isn't anyone helping her? Tom, does Alan hear the cries? You do now that you're closer. Um, okay. The only reason I didn't have your role is I feel like, given what Alan is thinking about and concerned about, I feel like she's not, like, on high alert for, like, things of that sort. Whereas for a guy who comes from a grimdark place, uh, hearing cries is kind of common, so I think his ear would be attuned to it. And Fair, he would be would... Uh, correct. Yep, yeah, yeah. Um, um, Tom, but yes, once, all... once you're within range, you can absolutely Okay, hear. cool. I was going to say, with the evidence that's been presented, Reginald would be trying to put this together in his head, probably in the style of an investigation, kind of, trying to map out what he thinks the problem is, um, because he does have a whole bunch of weird skills and knowledge in terms of undead fey and fiends if this is related should i test for that how do you want to play it out or should i just keep it uh, go ahead yeah go, go ahead and roll uh, if you want to roll like investigation if you want to roll arcana um just yeah tell me what kind of specific thing you're trying to piece together are you trying to um, draw a is it just a, a get a sense of what the fuck is happening is it a i want to are you trying to like connect the the dots between death house and this house what's I feel like it's half connect the dots, half figure out the crying lady. Like he's still okay, tracking yep. the environment, but he wants to know what they're going up against. If Quinny's going to send them into this environment as he quite apparently is. Uh, and I rolled a 25. Whoa. Um, okay. So based on what you've seen so far, um, again, coming from a, a relatively grim, dark, place yourself um the tone of this place uh doesn't seem to be uh what's the word i'm looking for here this doesn't seem like a unique instance if that makes any sense um looking around at like the indifference of people and particularly how the orcish woman kind of blew past quinny uh like you get this because this is actually what a lot of places in your world are like uh life under the black spider's horde isn't great for really anyone uh, and admittedly, life under the Alliance, also not really great in, in your future, uh, where there is only war. Um, so um, you get the sense that uh, whatever tragedy has befallen this woman and the general indifference is likely because tragedies seem to befall people here all the time. And it gets to a point where it there's no point in interrupting your day, if that tracks for you mm -hmm. um yep. with that same logic um it would be safe to assume that the death house has nothing to do with what's going on here this seems like a separate tragedy cool um so noting that not pete still wearing the ring of invisibility mm -hmm. um it's like not that anyone can see the facial expression but not pete is just sort of like Wow, yeah, this is this is quite awful. And then reaches out and takes like um like a jeweled hair piece from someone who's walking by <laughs> who's kind of slightly fancier. This truly is an awful, awful place. I'm just gonna take that necklace real quick. Oh, I guess no one's noticing because so many terrible things happen. They don't even note or if they notice they don't care that they're being robbed. I'm just yeah, those that looks nice. I'm gonna take that watch. But also um, there's just this feeling of like, yeah, no, this is really hard for them, but okay. I will also say um, that, uh, so you pocket a few of these things and you start mm -hmm. to realize that uh, none of them are worth very much. Uh, like the hair piece was, was definitely good, but like, um, or the hairpin rather, but like the the watch is, is old and kind of plain. And uh, weirdly what seems to pass for tremendous wealth here is likely what you'd find in like, 
an, a junky antique shop. Um, like the watches is something. like, a, it's not a Timex, it's like a Tlormex. Like yes, it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's clearly been worn for a really long time, but it's like, oh. oh that person probably needed this a lot. <laughs> Um, you, uh, you also notice that it, it, uh, it has, it, it's clearly very well worn, uh, but it also seems to have stopped some time ago. Well, that's a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> well, um. You just pocket a metaphor and, um. Yep, yep, uh, as I do. So, like, immediately the joy, just that tiny joy of just taking things that, like, tee is just like, oh, oh. <laughs> well, oh. Um, like Reginald will just subtly lean aside to Alan and go, so what do you think we should do next? Well, I think we need to find out everything we can about how to get in this castle and what's up there and anything, whatever the tome and the raven kind thing and the sun scythe. I, I mean, that's what we're here for, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, you're not talking to me. Sorry. My bad. That's a, you guys are having a private conversation. <laughs> yeah, we don't have that mind link <laughs> thing going on anymore. <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> Frig. So, are, are you I'm not wasting another a level five spell slot to cast it again. Anyways. So are you going to, are you going to tell the king or are we not allowed to give him, I'm not allowed to tell him what I think. So. None. Up to you. Oh, okay. Then I will. Uh, Quinny. What's yeah. the uh, what's the game plan here? Uh, well, I'm thinking about what uh, Jin Pai said in that um, nobody in the town was very helpful in helping him, you know, fight and find Strahd. I figured if maybe we did something for these people in exchange, they would maybe be more helpful. I just tried talking to this orc lady and she just totally brushed me off. So they're not really forthcoming with, with information, just kind of as a cold contact, you know, I think we're going to have to win some folks over. Well, let me do a past. quick a quick litmus test here, because what if, you know, maybe they just haven't I, I, heard I, I, a I'm jaunty... sorry, can, can you become visible? This is really off-putting with just oh, a voice. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, you're um, right. Um, I uh, So, uh, not Pete, like, takes off the ring, um, and he was, like, facing away from everyone just because he could. <laughs> uh, <laughs> turns back around. <laughs> Um, he's and, like way further away. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like I'm throwing my voice or anything. It's just this play, you know, it's weird. Man, these people have been eating, you know, the hardship soup of life for a long time, it feels like. You know, maybe they just haven't heard like a jaunty song in a while. Maybe this could be like a good litmus test to see, you know, kind of where they're at. You got a song in your heart there, not Pete? Oh, that's how I always do. <laughs> Um, so, I uh, just being like the cool, being the cool bard that I am, I just sort of like look around and I'm like, see if there's any place that could be a stage. Um, and I guess there's like an overturned apple cart that has so much dust on it. Like clearly some, like their business was struggling so badly. Once the cart fell over, they just thought, what's the point in even picking it up again? Um, so not Pete climbs onto that and, uh, would I have any like kind of instruments on me? I mean, I mean, I'm a bard. I should, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, what is not Pete's instrument of choice? Um, oh, how stupid do I want to get with this <laughs> is the main question. Yeah. Ever so often it's just like, hello child, here's a loaded gun. Use it responsibly. <laughs> and then, you know, you can't be mad when the result is the result. It's true. It's the church organ. Just opens the bag of holding for glamping. Whole church comes out. <laughs> she just puts on a phantom mask. It's like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, um, why can't I remember what they're called? You know, like those, uh, oh, it's like in, um, I think you should leave the, uh, on Netflix when, um, uh, the, Fred, the Fred Willard, Willard. Yes. Is play like whatever that is. The wacky piano. Yes. Why can't I think of what it's called? A hurdy-gurdy uh, comes A hurdy-gurdy machine, yes. Is that right? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I think so. So given that you weren't able to bring your bag of holding, yeah. uh, I'll I say... I guess I left that in the glamping tent. Well, I think, though, you probably have a shitty uh, 
like traveling hurdy gurdy, which is like um, it it like unfolds and there's just a bunch of shit hanging off it, and it, it really it's it's like a tiny uh, think like an organ grinder size thing you can wear around your neck. Uh, and you kind of unfold the right. box. So and here's, yeah, I, like I take the string out, put it around my neck, so <laughs> like, and they like these sound like, like come out. You yeah. know, it's whimsical. It's so whimsical. Mm. And it's colorful. Um, there's like a little mechanical monkey that I wind up uh, and it starts like kind of like chattering away. Um, uh, part of it is also clearly a melodica. So like I get that into my mouth and start like, yes. <laughs> You know, so yep. I start playing around. I'm like, and like, and two, three, four, uh, like. <laughs> Uh, Quinny. Oh, we use that song to torture fiends in my world. <laughs> uh, Quinny, uh, given your your love of dance, um, are you able to resist uh, moving to this sick beat? Would it help? Would it help lift the spirits of these people? I'm not so much concerned about the spirits of the people. I'm just curious about the spirit of Quinny. Uh, yeah, I mean, like Quinny would be would be up for that if it. Yeah, like he'd be like, he wants to, he, he would want to help. So if it's, I think in his head, it's like. If I dance and it becomes about me, I'll stop dancing. But if my dancing with the music gets like a crowd of people together, gets people kind of clapping or like dancing themselves, then that's good. So I'll 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 dance until one of those two things happens. Okay, cool. Can you roll me a performance check, please? <laughs> that's a decent roll. My performance is not good. Uh, I just 16. Kind of fold, I just fold my arms and I say, "Well, this is new." <laughs> Um, you, uh, Laura, you feel a rhythmic tapping, um, in your pocket and, uh, you realize Billy Fingers is dancing along to the beat. Yeah, Billy, you can dance. That's uh, cool. so he, he like crawls up onto your shoulder and, 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 and starts, uh, dancing away. Um, and then, and then a rhythmic hooting, uh, just comes from deep within my, my cloak. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, and uh, as that's happening, not Pete just like points at the rhythmic hooting, like, yeah, keep it up, little buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. So um, the uh, the majority of people, you get a few sidelong glances that aren't uh, annoyance, um, certainly aren't joy, but are just kind of a, uh, the way commuters look at buskers uh, in Union Station during rush hour here in Toronto, which is just kind of like, yeah, cool. Why net? What? Okay, you know what? I, I don't have time for this. Um, so there's a, a, a lot of that. Um, Quinny, uh, this is the first time you've danced publicly on your own, uh, Robin style. Um, and uh, <laughs> oh, I got the reference. it. Um, it, <laughs> it, it it's it's a little it's a little revealing and, and like obviously a, a little. Um, uh, you're making yourself very vulnerable by doing this. Yep, pretty embarrassing. Um, but it's also um, freeing to finally kind of do it in public rather than um, alone, which is nice. And um, Reginald, I think uh, the image of Quinny dancing, like admittedly not spectacularly, but very earnestly, um, does cast him in a bit of a different light for you. Um, because this isn't dictator behavior as you've understood it, because like, uh, has even less respect for me now. <laughs> yeah, well, like, the black spider would likely be like, everyone sit and watch while I dance, and then would, like, dance, whereas this legitimately does just seem to be an expression of of um, of who he is. Uh, so I think you just kind of file that away as, as an interesting oddity. Uh, I don't think dance is really a thing in your world unless it's uh, victory or intimidation. Some kind of yorkata. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, you, you've likely even, seen a bunch of hakas, but you've never seen, like, uh, a dance that doesn't have warrior intent. I would agree with that, yeah. I think for the first bit, he wonders if he's having a seizure, mm -hmm. uh, and then he's just confused. You don't try to tackle me and put your wallet in my mouth or anything? Or? <laughs> no, 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 okay. no. He, he wasn't told to, so he would just stand there and let you seize. Just going to let this happen. Um... Quinny, um, you at first can kind of feel everyone's eyes on you, despite the fact no one's staring at you. Um, and then eventually just kind of settle, settle into the groove. Um, and then as you kind of end uh, the dance, you think uh, you definitely feel eyes on you and you look around um, and, you know, obviously your friends are watching. 
uh, little Richard and um, Billy Fingers were getting down uh, over with Alan, who's looking on impassively, but likely tapping a toe secretly inside her boot. Um, Angela from the office style. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, as you're, you just, you really feel an intense stare on you. And uh, as you kind of look around, um, you think you see um, a, a pair of, of gloved hands applauding um, in the upper floor of a, a nearby house. Um, but uh, when you blink, they seem to be gone. But the feeling of that stare kind of remains. All right. Uh, I think as the song winds down, Quinny kind of slows down as well and just kind of like the dance just kind of peters out, catches his breath for a second and just um, looks back and is like, well, doesn't seem to have worked that well. Uh, there was there was someone clapping. You know what? And... I've done worse shows. <laughs> uh, uh, there is, however, uh, a man sort of striding across the. Um, um, he's he's exited the tavern uh, and seems to be walking, um, kind of with purpose uh, towards you all. Oh, okay. Then I'll I'll wait for him to approach. Um... And see see what happens. Cool. Um, so uh, uh, the man who approaches is clearly uh, a warrior of some sort. Uh, he's got um, a mace hanging from his uh, from his belt, um, and wearing kind of uh, classic um, like well, the kind of outfit you'd put Hamlet in. So just like you know, um, uh, a black doublet. Um, he's wearing pants instead of tights because you know. Barovia. Um, <laughs> Am I right? Uh, he's kind of got uh, um, sort of uh, longish um, uh, blonde hair. Um, if he was an actor, like think like a, a young pre getting his face smashed in Mickey Rourke. Um, so kind of a, a squarish jaw, um, sort of a, a, a biggish nose that, that like a very solid looking guy. Um and uh, it seems to be in his kind of like late 20s. Um, and uh, you notice that his, his eyes seem to be um, red uh, from crying. And um, he uh, he approaches and uh, he says, uh, <clears throat> um, well, well met, uh, strangers. Um, I wanted to uh, come and express my thanks for that mournful song of grieving you played. It truly met my mood. The kazoo in particular really <laughs> spoke deeply to me. It was my father's favorite instrument, and for a moment you brought him back to me. Queen like <gasps> looks over his shoulder at ah, uh, that's the one, <laughs> uh, not Peter Baelish, and is just kind of like, I, I don't know if that's what we were going for, but I'm glad, I'm glad it made you, you know, feel something. You know, because it's not about intent; it's about uh, you know how how the audience takes it. So we're a results like, oriented, yeah, exactly. Performers, absolutely. Uh, so it's, uh, you're welcome. Um, yeah. He he kind of nods and then he he looks to Reginald who's kind of standing out like a sore thumb in in full armor and says, "Wait, are are you are you simply traveling musicians or or do you have some prowess of the arts, Marshal?" And he raises an eyebrow. I can't uh, tell you anything because I've been ordered by the king to keep everything close to the vest. Only when you're lying. So it sounds like he's. Trying to lie. <laughs> Am I supposed to tell the truth, King? I, you're making you're making this weird, dude. I just, just if if you want to lie, you're better at it when you don't talk so much. All right, so I can be honest. Hi, we're here to kill Strahd von Zarevich. I'm Reginald Tingler from an alternate dimension. <laughs> can you help us kill the Vampire Lord or direct us to his secret items? Um, yeah, <laughs> what he says. <laughs> his his eyes light up, uh, but also he he does the like that. Shh, don't don't don't. And he's like, um, we uh, it, it's it's not safe to speak here. Um, but yes, I need your help, and it sounds like I can help you as well. Um, but it is not safe here. The walls have ears, and then he looks to all the buildings. It's like not literal ears, but figurative oh. ears, the kind of ears that could hear talk of such plots. Um, 
But if truly you oh, do King see King Quinny's never been afraid. This is our King Quinny. He's going to kill Strahd von Zarevich. He's not uh, afraid of anything. Reginald, Reginald, yes? no more truth. Um, so do, do you have somewhere more secluded we can go to? Uh, yes, uh, we... Uh, follow me. Um, there's... We, we can talk safely in, at, uh, at my father's house. Um, we are preparing his body for burial, but um, it's uh, the safest place that, that I've yet found. Um, if you truly seek to destroy the devil, um, we sh should speak there. There's a matter I need your assistance with. Uh, and he starts, like, lead. guiding you to the, uh, uh, the <laughs> Burgomaster's mansion. Because oh. apparently Burgomaster <laughs> is what we're going with for the person who runs this town. Burgomaster. It sounds like a thing George Foreman would sell that will just help beat the fat. <sighs> <laughs> Something Michael Scott can burn his foot in. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, so um, as you you go with him, um, you you yet again pass by the um, uh, the um, house um, with the the weeping woman inside, uh, and you just hear her um, screaming uh, the word Gertrude uh, over and over again. Uh, Yikes! Hey, uh, hey, fellow, what's your name? Um, the people of this town uh, call me uh, Ismark the Lesser. Uh, Ismark will do, but if you want to be a cool kid or a mean girl. Like from the traveling play Mean Girls that was once performed here and never again. Uh, simply, uh, Ismark the Lesser will do. I've lived long in my father's shadow, and now that he's gone, I suppose the Lesser will have to do. I, I'm not 100% clear on how you'd like to be called. Just call me Ismark. <laughs> That'd be great. Ismark? Okay. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, Ismark... What's the story with, with that house, the woman crying inside? I gather it's been happening a lot and no one's doing anything about it? Um, yeah, that happens a lot around here, as you, you may have noticed. Um, f folks uh, living in the, the shadow of the vampire have, uh, have, have lost a lot of their, their drive and motivation to help. It's truly a pain in the ass. Um, that would be um, uh, a woman known as uh, Mad Mary, um, she, uh... Well, that just seems rude and, and ableist. Yes, uh, that is a common thing here in, uh, in, in this town. Uh, she's only recently, uh, come under the affliction, though. Her, uh, daughter, who, uh, none of us have ever met, but she assures us he's very real. Gertrude, um, has, uh, has gone missing. Um, she always kept herself barricaded in there, coming out only to, to buy the necessary, uh, sundries uh, before returning home but uh, recently it would seem that uh, her her daughter has gone missing and she seems truly um, unconsolable so you have seen her since this horrible event occurred so is Mark are we to understand that like these vampires are like taking people oh yes and everyone just continues to live here regardless uh Listen, I don't know if you passed through a bone field on your way here, but we are kind of short on options. Um, I have hope that it is merely uh, the village of Barovia um, living directly under the shadow of, of Ravenloft that, uh, that is, is so affected. I, I have hopes uh, that um, we might be able to find peace in um, uh, uh, Valakai. Uh, a, a settlement deeper in the valley uh, that I, I hope is out of the, the reaches of, of Strahd. Um, but he is the master of these lands. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of an accepted fact here that that's going to happen. Mary thought she had a pretty good plan by just barricading her daughter in the attic. But it um, seems that uh, even the best laid, weird, vaguely abusive plans can go horribly awry. As it turns out, weird, vaguely abusive plans often go horribly awry. Yes, mm. truly. You know, sometimes it takes a few of them for you to figure that out. Because mm -hmm. you think, ah, oh, mm -hmm. this is the one that's going to work. And then, oh, whoa, surprise. You know, this is good to know. Uh, if, I, if I ever attempt to execute a vaguely abusive plan, I, I should prepare for failure. And yes. disappointment in myself for not being better. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Or potentially success. I mean, this might be the one that works. You don't know. Yes, well, 
re- regardless, uh, people here do tend to um, go to extremes. Right. Um, Speaking of extremes and vaguely abusive, what's up with the dead house and the children in front desperately asking strangers oh, for help? Yeah, yeah, do not do not help them. Um, Why? They are uh, everyone who attempts it uh, disappears. Um, we're pretty. My my father and uh, my sister and I uh, have spent many nights trying to sort out uh, the solution to the death house. We've burned it twice. Um, but it rises again. Um, we, the, the children, we believe, uh, Rose and Thorn, their names are, are a manifestation of its will, not actual children. So, good call, not helping them. Yikes. Yeah, this is not a good realm, um, which is why I'm, I'm so desperate to, to, uh, escape from here, um. Uh, Isabella, my, my sister and I, we, we stayed, uh, as long as my father was alive, but the... The recent assaults on on our house have become too much. As has, and he leans in quietly, he's like his Strahd's interest in her. Um, we truly must get her away before uh, anything more horrible befalls her. What? Why is your sister of interest? Ah, uh, um, and so he opens. He kind of leads you up to um, the mansion as as you're having this conversation. Um, the mansion is uh, clearly a, a, a slightly nicer, uh, I mean, again, in very, very relative terms, um, but uh, it's, a, it's a weary looking mansion. Like this place is, is would have been very fine at one point, but uh, has clearly seen better days um, behind a sort of a, a rusting iron fence um, that is uh, twisted and torn uh, in several spots. Uh, so it looks like something has forced its way through. Um, quite a few times. Uh, the grounds um, are clearly uh, ill-kept. Um, there's kind of weeds and overgrowth everywhere. Um, and uh, as you approach uh, the building, um, you can see that uh, there are heavy claw marks um, in the uh, the walls uh, on the outside that seem to have stripped away sort of the paint and finery, as well as um, signs of, uh, of fire. Um all the windows are barred and uh, planked up with wood, um, but uh, you can see various sort of um, blood stains on the outside uh, throughout. Um, is, so, hmm? I was going to say, Ismark, what the hell happened here? Um, the Devil Strahd uh, is known for having a, uh, shall we say, wandering eye. Uh, he, he has... Uh, Great uh, appetites, uh, both romantically and sexually, if, if the tales would be believed, oh, and is God. constantly in the, the search for a new mate. Um, we had hoped with the, the arrival of uh, Queen Streep that uh, perhaps his, uh, his interest would finally be satiated, but um, no, he, is, he has come for my sister, and despite our best efforts, we were barely able to repel him. Merle Streep? Yes, Queen Streep. You know her? Yeah, we we know her. She's a real piece of work. Hmm. Yes, vampire queens tend to be that. Uh, uh, she's a vampire now? Now? I mean, I, I suppose, uh, yes, we I encountered her but briefly as she, she came through here. She seemed quite determined uh, to find our Lord Strahd. Um, but- Is she still here? Uh, yes, she she rules with him from Castle Ravenloft. Oh, uh, uh, she see, did. Yeah, just uh, like looking at everyone, like, oh, she holy shit, Jesus, <laughs> oh my God, uh, holy fuck. <laughs> friend, uh, friend is Mark the Lesser. My powerful, talented, cunning uh, associate here, Alan's uh, sister, was kidnapped by Strahd and this queen. We need to bring her back. Have you heard anything about Bryn or multiple Bryns? Uh, the name is not familiar. If if she didn't come through Barovia, then uh, we likely don't. In fact, I only know of of Queen Streep's uh, mortal time because she arrived in our town much like you did, although she did not put on nearly as interesting a performance of morning songs and dances. Um, but uh, no, uh, uh, Strahd is, is known to... Um, abduct people far and wide, um, so... I guess in modern terms, it's kind of like saying, hey, the bank, do you know about this one coin? And the answer is no. There are many coins. 
You're right. Well, that that I mean, clears everything up. Yeah. Yeah, this is something that I... I'm Mark the Lesser. I'm... Metaphors are not my game. <laughs> This isn't something I want to say, but it's something I have to say. This is our, uh, the violent, murderous assassin king, Quiddy. Uh, and he set rules for the band that undoubtedly apply to you as not a member of this band. If you allow any of us to die, he will kill you. And he has no interest in your thoughts or feedback. If you were a coward, shut up about it. I know, harsh, but those are the rules he's applying to everyone, as clearly laid out. I'm being honest. Hmm. Sounds like Three Truths, No Lie, a game we commonly play here in Barovia. Well, that was just two that he mentioned, but anyway. <laughs> we can't count here. Strahd is scary. <laughs> Please, oh boy. follow me. Um, so he, um, he opens the door, and uh, you enter uh, the mansion. Um, uh, do you, sorry, can you guys roll me perception checks as you come in? Just if if you think your character would be kind of observing the damage and kind of the grounds to the house as you, you approach. Uh, yeah. 20 would. He all, like when you mentioned it, I, I all, figured it like most a, of you would. Uh, Alan's, right. Alan's gathered info. Great. Yeah, I got a seven. Hmm. I'm good at investigation, but not perception. Let's see. Dirty 20. Seven. Oh, six. I have a six. Okay. 23. Um. These great rolls are going to get used on perception, and as soon as I need to oh, fight yeah, someone, baby. you're going to burn them all down. You just got to you got to throw out that dice before we get to combat. Um, so, looking around uh, the exterior of the mansion, um, uh, Alan and Quinny, um, Quinny, uh, you see a lot of actually both of, uh, both of you to recognize this. Um, you see uh, do, uh, like wolf prints, um, similar to Goblin Juniors, but much larger. Hmm. Um, as well, um, you can feel the the sort of um, lingering effects uh, of of defensive enchantments um, that uh, seem to have uh, just like it's it's the the afterglow of of enchantments. There there doesn't seem to be um, any left. Um, you can also see a number of um, bear footprints. Like, not like raw bear, but like someone not wearing boots. So, um, oh. barefoot footprints. Um, as Amongst the big sort of uh, massive slashes, um, you also see what look like um, fingernail, like, drags. Like, human-sized hand claw marks uh, as well. And, um, Alan, I think you find part of a jawbone. Hey, Tom, mm. does Alan know anything about werewolves? Um, go ahead and roll me an arcana check, please. Cool. Dirty 20. Whoa. Yes, nice. she does. Um, <clears throat> in your studies during the, uh, the war with um, the uh, Unseen Hand, um, I think you, you looked into this a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, you, you know the basics. Um, from what you can tell from this you're not certain whether this indicates that humanoid things attack the building and then turn into werewolves or yeah. if it was a mix of wolves and creatures on the ground but right. um yeah this this definitely reeks of 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 werewolf of possible werewolf or just possible giant wolf well i'm like who the hell is walking around barefoot it's a very good question uh, Donkey Jr. is very concerned about the the presence of wolf marks, and he Aww. just kind of um, uh, like uh, kind of like nudges up against Reginald's leg in kind of a looking for safety way. Yeah, Reginald will pat him. They're old friends. They're in this together. Um, cool. So um, with that, um, the the four of you enter the mansion. Um, so inside the mansion, uh, it's it's clearly one of those places that is um, like set up for company, but has clearly not seen any in a while. Uh, so there's like you know nice plateware and stuff out, and like there's a tea set and everything else, but there's just a thin layer of dust o over almost all of it. Um, and uh, in the uh, as you make your way kind of through, um, Ismark explains. Uh, the um, uh, the devil Strahd began uh, coming for Isabella uh, about a week ago. Um, the 
began by just sneaking in. I'm not sure how he made it in. Um, the, the, the rumors are that they must be invited. Uh, but the vampire's abilities to control the minds of, of those he affects are, are high. Um, Isabella woke up with, with few memories of, of the night before, aside from blazingly hungry red eyes. Um, with that, uh, with her help, we, we set up some enchantments around the building, but um, the assaults in intensified over the next few days, enough so that uh, our dear father uh, had a heart attack. Um, and uh, he, he now must be laid to rest, but my hope is that we can get Isabella away from here beyond Strahd's reach uh, before uh, she too succumbs to, to his, his dark influence. She's a, 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 a mighty warrior in her own right, and I also... Though I fear for my sister, I also fear what having yet another powerful warrior on his side will do. Um, and with that, you're led into a room um, where there is a, a, a woman, um, uh, think a um, uh, Zoe Saldana type, um, with uh, sort of like um, fiery red hair um, pulled back and away from her neck. Um, and she's examining two bite marks Um that are, are very clearly uh, present on her throat. Um, she's dressed in sort of light armor. Um, it's, uh, I think, what you'd expect from kind of almost a town watch, uh, just because there's no reason to, like, wear fucking full plate all the time. Um, she's got a uh, sword on her hip, and, um, yeah, she's uh, she's staring very kind of hauntedly uh, into the mirror, um, and, uh, she's just kind of muttering under her breath, like, um, you come for me again, you son of a bitch. We'll see what's what. Uh, and then she notices you guys in the mirror and she t sort of turns and says, oh, uh, my apologies. Uh, I was lost to myself. Uh, Ismark, who are these people? Uh, hi, um, Quinny Brown Barrel. Um, this is, uh, Alan Reginald Tingler from another dimension. Hello. Uh, and, uh. Not Peter Baelish. Hello, that's me. Hi. So who is Peter Baelish? Well, you know, it's funny being born with a name. It's really only about being in relation to someone else. Why, if I get started on this topic, I could be here for hours <laughs> and... upon hours. Frankly, eight seasons worth of time. <laughs> she, uh, she walks over to you and puts a, a hand on your shoulder and says, I actually know this feeling more than you would think. I'm pretty sure my father named me Isabella because he was going to say Ismark, but had already used that on my brother and kind of just got <laughs> stuck. So I feel you, not Peter Baelish. Um, it is a pleasure Pete's, to know you. Not Pete's goatee kind of like twitches as if it's about to cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've missed I've missed the, the, the beard reactions. <laughs> it just goes like, well, <laughs> I'm just like, well, you know. My first name is basically the first four letters of my last name. So talk about originality. Also a problem. Yes. Yes, truly. Um, so, uh, yes, they explain that um, Isabella has been visited twice by Strahd. Um, they, they've reinforced the house with sort of holy icons. Um, Quinny and Alan, can you rule me a perception check, please? Oof. That one. Uh, <laughs> you take 17. out your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Nothing to see here. <laughs> yeah, uh, don't mind me. Nothing to see ever again. Um, Quinny, um, you see um, a um, an unfamiliar um, sort of holy icon uh, etched into the walls. Um, it uh, it seems to be um, a um, sort of a rounded. Um, this is dumb because it's going to sound like your Jossie logo from our other show, but I swear it's not. <laughs> um, you see uh, what almost looks like um, like a USSR sickle, um, but um, it has uh, almost uh, even though they're they're sort of crudely etched into the wall. Um, sort of like uh, brilliant, um, sort of almost sunbeam lights coming off in, in almost um, like if you think about the iconography that uh, Christianity occasionally uses where it's like, here's like the heart with the thorns and stuff. And there's like, blam, like rays of sun coming out of it. 
Um, but uh, weirdly, it looks kind of cheap and a little bit dumb. And it just it it reminds you of of the first time Butthole tried to explain what the Moonhammer logo was. Um, and uh, even though this is clearly not that, it it just it it tickles you in the right way. Um, because you know you've seen a lot of ostentatious religion, and it's kind of nice to see something sort of dumb. Right. Yeah. Uh, Quinny will gesture to that and and just kind of out loud just say sun scythe just as a question uh yes the morning lord right um look hey uh ismark you talked about the walls having ears and stuff like that are we uh are we cool to chat here or he uh he nods and says um uh, my father used the, the last of, of his. He, he was never a particularly strong enchanter, but um, he funneled what magical energy he had into creating uh, the marks of protection uh, around this building. And it, it man- it's managed to keep the monsters at bay for several evenings now. I do worry that the, the powers are beginning to falter, but uh, his his faith in Sunscythe was, uh, was endless. The Morning Lord uh, has protected us till now. Uh, this is a, a truly dark um, realm, but um, there is those of us who who hope for for something better um, do so in the name of of the Morning Lord. Okay, we've got it on pretty good authority that that's one of the required items for truly defeating Strad von Zarovich. Uh, and, and, uh, Isabella, turn, like, Ismark's kind of like, nah, yeah, I mean, we've kind of heard, and, like, Isabella just, like, straight arms him out of the way, and just like, yes, um, I've, I've heard that in, in, uh, in my readings as well, um, it, it is a, a holy weapon, um, that, uh, most believe is, is allegorical, but, um, I believe is, is real. Yeah, um, we, uh, I mean, we don't have a ton of info to go off of, uh, actually, if you wouldn't mind, I perhaps my friend could inspect it just to be doubly well, sure. Uh, sorry, the the icon. They don't have the weapon. I know, I know. To oh. to like like look at the icon and get basically like uh, not Pete who kind of named these objects and, mm-hmm. and and has the book on it to like make sure that everyone's lore is is right and stuff like that. And sure. I think this is where I could uh, not Pete could pull out those cards. I feel like those I was cards about could to be say helpful. yes, yes, yes. Indeed, they yes, could. Yes, yes. Um, fantastic. Uh, okay, so um, one moment as I just pull up the card information. Um, but yes, sure enough, not Pete. Your hand kind of slides into your pocket, and you can feel um, the deck is almost um, trembling with uh, with anticipation. Um, Ooh, settle down, partners. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. You do you. Uh, so you draw uh, the Taroka deck, and immediately um, Isabella's eyes uh, light up. Uh, and she just says, a, a Taroka deck? Those are, those are incredibly rare, uh, but should be able to point us in, in the right direction. Um, Ismark, meanwhile, is explaining his, his rough plan that he and Isabella have come to, which is to, um, basically get her, uh, to the, um, uh, Valakai, um, which again is a settlement, um, much further away from, from Ravenloft. Both of them, neither of them, uh, are under any illusion that this is like the thing that will, will save her, but they both know that this mansion is, is pretty much burnt. And um, they think just getting a little bit further away from the castle might give might give them a chance to kind of figure out a next step. Um, okay, so not Pete. Mm-hmm. Um, can you please go ahead and roll me an Arcana check? Yes, yes, I can. Ten. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not great. Um, oh, I'll... my butterfingers, not Pete says as he spills the cards as they come out. <laughs> okay, so... Um... Playing too much hurdy-gurdy in the streets. <laughs> oh, I, just, I should have warmed up and I didn't. I was so excited, you know, to lift the people's spirits or to mourn their dead, not Pete says, like giving a weird kind of like sideways look and a nod to is Mark the Lesser. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the... Let me see here. Uh, 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 uh. So um, 
both Isabella and Ismark admit to not uh, necessarily being able to interpret these cards. Um, they know there are people sort of throughout the realm who uh, are better at reading them, um, but they will offer what insight they can. Um, the first uh, card you draw, um, Isabella says, is um, uh, a card uh, of history, um, of uh, knowledge, generally speaking, of um, sort of ancient wills and powers uh, often used to better understand one's own future or one's enemies. Uh, and the card you draw is... Sorry, this is going to be a lot of me looking things up <laughs> for like two minutes. So Yeah, no worries. Um, the... Where are you? Um, yes, uh, so you draw um, the uh, Master of Stars, uh, and it is a, uh, a wizard card. Uh, let me just grab the image here. Da, 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 da. Um, I'm a wizard. <laughs> and baby I'm a star <laughs> uh, so uh, you um, pull a card uh, featuring a, a very like classically wizened uh, uh, like Gandalf-esque motherfucker um, sort I of look over a staff. Matt Pete's shoulder and just say stereotype yeah uh, <laughs> you Sorry. notice though that um, there uh, there seems to be kind of a dark uh, smudge um, that uh, you've never noticed before, um, uh, kind of like across the wizard's eyes. So like um, almost as though they've been crossed out um, in a single stroke. Um, and uh, Isabel says, that's that's strange. That I don't think that's supposed to be there. Um, the second card you draw is... Um, <laughs> It's just full of dead air, is what that, uh, that card <laughs> is. That's the Joker card. Sorry, I didn't shuffle these very well. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, it's the have... rules card. Yeah. <laughs> this is for... Oh, this is a, for bridge. I don't... <laughs> yeah, I should read this. I don't I don't know how to play, play it's the bridge. Quick, it's just the quick play rules. Yeah, yeah. there are, there are three, uh, three wheat cards that just somehow made it uh, across the decks. Um, God damn it. This is... Yep, that's one wheat. That's that's another weak card. Ooh, shit, I look I, I like look over to there. Reginald during this time. I'm just like wondering what he's doing. He's been quiet for a very long time. Reginald's just standing, leaning against a wall, looking out the window. He's having actively nothing to do with any of this. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even want to see what the cards are saying. Like he's like trying to look away. Uh, he's he is. So nonchalant that it is like performatively don't give a shit. <laughs> um, I am so sorry. I can't find. There are like pages and pages of cool card things and hints to give you, and I can't fucking find the one I need. Oh no! That's all right. We can fart around while you keep looking. That would be. It's the fart card, Tom. Yeah. What secrets does it tell? The card just says, the oh, it's, it's a blank card, and yeah. the meaning is... No, the, the problem one's... isn't inventing names for cards, it's that they each have a mysterious clue that will help you on the adventure, and I can't make those up, because that'll just give it away, so... Oh, I see. Well, this this one card, this is just straight up a Rorschach blot test. Um, I What I currently see in it is... Um, uh, it looks like um, a family, but like one member of the family is just like way off to the side. Like everyone else belongs together, but this one person, um, like who wants so, so badly to be a part of the family. I have to put that one down right now. When he doesn't uh, get it, he's like in his head. He's like, "Oh my god, it's me! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he pulled my card." <laughs> Yeah, Reginald just thinks uh, not Peter Baelish is trying to rub in the fact that the rest of the team gels really well and that, like, not Pete's so welcome and he's just not in any way, shape, or form. 
<laughs> and I'm literally thinking like, God, what are we doing here? Am I going to leave these people at some point? Us? Or is is Mark and Isabel? Or In is that monologue. not for us to know? Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm done with this fucking book. Um, so um, you, uh, the second card um, that you draw is... After the Rorschach that everyone took as their own Rorschach, <laughs> thus creating some kind of uber Rorschach. Yes, the Urshack, if you will. <laughs> I um, will. So um, the second card, uh, after you, you, you kind of cycle through a bunch of garbage cards that you don't want, um, uh, Isabella explains, uh, tells of a powerful force for good and protection, uh, a holy symbol of great hope. Um, and, uh, you draw, um, a card with the watchman smiley face on it. Um, and, um, it, uh, it just says, uh, um, uh, yes, um, look, f uh, oh, shit. Uh, look for this. Oh, it in the, says all of this. It says all of this, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look for this behind the fake smiles. Fake smiles. Okay. Um, the uh, third card uh, is a card of, of power and strength. It tells of a, a weapon of, of great vengeance. Um, and... Um, this one has um, just a uh, a skull, uh, a picture of a skull, um, and uh, it it speaks of um, being in. Uh, yes, uh, the card says as, as kind of Isabella passes her hand over it. Um, she says, uh, "I see a dead village drowned by a river, ruled by one who has brought great evil into the world." And she's like, fuck, okay, that's not a great one. That's not a great one for us. Um, yeah, can we treat that like, you know, one of the wheat cards or the Rorschach card and be like, we don't want that? Like, sure, we sure. We don't want card. that as yeah, part yeah, of yeah. our premonition. Like a quick rules bridge card. Yeah, agreed. Let's draw another one. Uh, and you draw another one and it's the skull. And you draw another one and it's the skull. And you draw another one and it's the skull. And, and when he just leans into the deck, just the pile of cards itself, and he's like, all right, fine. <laughs> and then, of course, when you lift up any of the skulls, the card underneath is something completely different. Um, and then, um, the final card, uh, to be drawn is, um, uh, da, 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 da. uh, you pull a card that just has like a cartoonishly bad vampire on it with fangs, um, and like a, like the fucking vampire emoji. Um, and, uh, she says, uh, yes, this is, this is the card of the enemy. I've got to assume from the vampire um, it says, uh, the enemy is a creature of darkness whose powers are beyond mortality. Yeah, fucking, yes, we get that. Okay, thanks. What Seems else you got? Obvious. Card. Yeah, for, like, um, you know, a mysterious deck. I mean, that's pretty on the nose. And, um, she, uh, pulls a, a second card in order to kind of determine the location. And, um, she says, uh, he, he must be faced where he cannot leave. Syntactically, these cards are no good. Uh, but, um, that would probably refer to likely his, um, coffin or his tomb. Um, so she says, now, obviously all of this is a bit vague. If we find someone who can actually interpret these cards correctly, um, we might be able to get more, more information, but, um, there's, there's no one like that here. If there were, Strahd would have killed them some time ago. Uh, he is seemingly everywhere. That is something you should know. He is all over the place all the time. So you kind of have to constantly be vigilant. Um, so they're ready to go. The one catch is, um, they want to make sure that their, their father is properly buried, uh, before they do only because things that aren't properly buried tend not to stay that way. Around right. These parts. They, they come back, you mm -hmm. know, undead and all that. Yeah. And given the amount of, of power he had, uh, in life, I, I fear what he might be able to do in death. Um, so they take you into kind of a side room where uh, the Burgomaster is uh, laid out in a, a handmade coffin that um, is Mark and Isabella made together. Um, and uh, she just kind of like rests a, a hand atop it and says, um, you know, he, uh, I, I don't remember much of my, my early life, but um, he, he took me in when I, I had no one. And uh, for that, I, I will always be grateful. Uh, we um, need to give him not, a proper send off. Not Pete just like 
quietly nods and um, slowly starts like unpacking the hurdy gurdy again, <laughs> remembering that these people take it as like uh, proper respect and uh, mourning music. Uh, her eyes grow wide and she says, oh, You have a griefotron? Yes. And his mark is like, <laughs> she play, He plays beautifully. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, you begin to hurdy gurdy uh, over over Play the body. Hurdy gurdy dirgy. Oh, Jesus Christ. ten points to Gryffindor. <laughs> um, Can I give you a point of inspiration? For that? <laughs> yes, I, I will one hundred percent allow that. Um, yeah. So uh, you begin to play um, a morning tune, and they all kind of respectfully listen on. Um, uh, however, night is coming, so uh, best to get him in the ground before uh, Strahd renews his assault. Cool, so I play it pretty quickly to like spur them on. <laughs> yep. So like. Yeah. Two times speed. <laughs> <laughs> and um, with that, you uh, sort of hoist the coffin and uh, begin to make your way towards the chapel uh, to bring the Burgomaster to his final rest. To the sounds of a hurdy-gurdy dirgy. This episode of Dum Dums and Dragons features the voices of Ryan LaPlante at the Ryan LaPlante on Twitter, Tyler Hewitt at Tyler underscore Hewitt on Twitter, Laura Elizabeth at El Hamstring on Twitter, our amazing special guest, and our fantastic DM Tom McGee at McGee TD on Twitter. This episode was edited by Ryan LaPlante, and all of Dum Dums and Dice's art is by Decapitated Markers or at Decapitated Marker on Twitter. That's M R K R. Our theme songs are And Now for That Massive Coronary and Skipping Through the Orchestra Pit Part One by Peter Gresser, and our ad music is No Control and Cheese. Chiefs by Jazzar, J-A-H-Z-Z-A-R, all available at freemusicarchive.org. When it comes to Dum Dums and Dice, you can visit our website at dumdumdice.com. Our Twitter and Instagram are at dumdumdice, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash dumdumdice. But most importantly, we've got merchandise at redbubble.com slash people slash dumdumdice, or you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. That's D-U-M-B, D-U-M-B, D-I-C-E. Now I'm off to do more magic. See you next episode. Dum Dums and Dice has to give a special thank you to the supreme beings of our Patreon at this time. Christian Manicola, Long Long, The Half Blind Prophet, James Quayar, DM Rob, Christopher Little, Olin Anderson, Sue One, Devin Boyce, George Dolby, One True Artistry, Orion Birchfield, Lorda Bradovic, Noel Louis, Anthony Griffin, and Jill and Noel Laplante. If you want your name to be added to this list, you can join our Patreon too at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. Thanks to them, and a little bit of thanks to you. <laughs>